Yes, I am back with another fabulous session. This is Santu Shahu and you are watching Shahu's tutorial. In this YouTube video, I will discuss 10 important writers of New Zealand literature and I will also discuss their important works. So, before starting the session, I would like to request all of you, please keep subscribing Shahu's tutorial and stay tuned with my channel because more videos will come soon. So let's begin the session uh, and this is the class 2 here. Mm. In the first class I have discussed that was a brief introduction to New Zealand literature and this is the class 2. So here is the first slide and important New Zealand writers. Their first one is Catherine Mansfield the short story writer. The famous short story writer that is Catherine Mansfield uh, is a New Zealand writer, essayist and journalist widely considered one of the most influential and important authors of the modernist movement, her works are celebrated across the world and have been published in 25 languages. So, Catherine Mansfield is a famous renowned short study writer of New Zealand literature. Her works have been published in 25 languages as well. And Mansfield wrote short stories and poetry under a variation of her own name, Catherine Mansfield, which explored what anxiety, sexuality, and existentialism alongside developing a New Zealand identity. So in her work, we will find the theme of anxiety, sexuality and existentialism alongside there was a developing New Zealand identity. So when she was only 19, she left New Zealand and settled in England, where she became friend of D.S. Lawrence, Virginia Woolf, Lady Ottolin Morel and others in the orbit of the Bloomsbury group. So she, when she uh, came to England, so when she settled in England, she became friend with D.H. Lawrence, Virginia Woolf, Lady Ottolin, model, a model, and others in the orbit of Bloomsbury Group. And Mansfield was diagnosed with pulmonary tuberculosis in 1917, and she died in the year is it 34. And Mansfield spent the happiest years of her childhood in the suburb of Karori. So this one, this Karori, Karori suburb, was very prominent, uh, very. You can see in her there is a refer there are there, there is a reference of this suburb Karori. Okay, so she used some of those memories as an inspiration for the story Prelude. So Prelude has some memories of uh, the suburb of Karori where Mansfield had spent the happiest years of her childhood. So Prelude is a short story uh, has written by Mansfield. So Prelude. Her first. Uh, uh, formally published story is His Little Friend and she wrote in her journals of feeling alienated in New Zealand and of, and, and of how she had become disillusioned because of her because of the repression of the Maori people. So earlier in the previous class I have talked about what is Maori language and Maori people. So Maori characters often are portrayed in a sympathetic or positive light in her later stories. Okay, So in her stories we will find that she has she has portrayed the Maori characters in a sympathetic tone, in a sympathetic manner, in a positive light. Such as, such as how Pearl Button was kidnapped, how Pearl Button was kidnapped. There we will find that the sympathetic characteristics, the sympathetic uh, or, uh, or positive light of the Maori characters. Okay. Now next slide here. Uh, she was particularly interested in the works of symbolists and Oscar Wilde. So she was influenced by Oscar Wilde as well as the symbolists. French symbolists. Her first same sex, so they, it, there is a mention that her first same sex, same sex relationship with was, uh, was with Marta, Marta Mahupuku, sometimes known as Martha Grace as well, a wealthy young Maori woman who was a wealthy, a wealthy Maori woman whom she had first met at Miss Swenson's school in Wellington and again in London 1906 and she became a muse for early work. So that who became a muse? Mata Mahofuku became a muse for her for her early work and she wrote in 1907 that I want Mata, I want Mata, I want her as I have had her terribly. This is unclean, I know, but true. This is unclean, I know, but true. So she wrote these lines for Martha Grace, who is also known as Mata Mahofuku and, and she had a same-sex relationship with her, that is Mata Mahofuku. So now move to the next. Her okay. Her short, her famous short story collections are in a German pension, in a German pension, bliss and other stories, the garden party and other stories, and the last one 
is uh, it is the famous she has written many short story collections but this one uh, duff's nest and other stories also a famous short story collection now famous short stories are prelude so prelude is a famous short story written by her bliss is also prelude bliss then the fly the fly was also written by her the fly the famous short story that is the fly hmm. uh, the garden party a cup of tea the doll's house so the doll's house a cup of tea the garden party a fly prelude as well as uh, as well as uh, the the bliss so these were famous short story written by Catherine Mansfield and she has written a novel that is the alloy she has written a novel that is the alloy alloy is a novel written by Catherine Mansfield which is a longer version of her short story prelude so prelude ka jo longer version hai, uska kya hai? that is a novel the alloy the alloy is a novel written by Catherine Mansfield a longer version of her short story prelude and it was edited and published posthumously after her death by her husband that is John Middleton Murray and John Middleton Murray is uh, a portrait as Gerald Creech in Aaron D.S. Lawrence novel Women in Love where Gerald Creech is based on the character of the husband of Catherine Mansfield that is John Middleton Murray hmm. Gerald Creech okay so now move to move to here look at here CK State the CK, CK the, the critic CK State has written a biographical novel on Catherine Mansfield and that novel was Mansfield a novel Mansfield a novel that was written by CK State focuses in part on in part on Mansfield's efforts during the years 1915 to 1918 to write the alloy so that or that um, biographical novel that is Mansfield a novel uh, focusing uh, focusing Catherine Mansfield's hmm, efforts during the years of 1915 to 1918 when she was trying to write the novel The Alloy. So the Alloy was written by Catherine Mansfield and her biographical novel uh, that was written by C.K. Steed is Mansfield a novel. Okay. Now the another fantastic and uh, uh, important New Zealand short story writer is Frank Sargeson. Uh, the making of a New Zealander. The making of a New Zealander, a man and his wife. So the famous short story collections, a man and his wife is a ma the making of a New Zealander and she, uh, he has also written hmm, a novel, full length novel that is I saw in my dream. So these were uh, important writings of Frank Sargassons, the making of a New Zealander, a man and his wife and the full length novel each I saw in my dream. In, 14, in, in 1949, Sargasson published his first full length novel that is I saw in my dream. Okay. Now move to the next slide, number three, Jen, Janet Frame, Janet Frame, so Janet Frame is a novelist, the famous novelist, Janet Frame, okay, she was intentionally, internationally renowned famous for her work which included novels, short stories, poetry, juvenile fiction and autobiography and received numerous awards including being appointed to the Order of New Zealand, Order of New New Zealand. So this is the highest prestigious work in New Zealand, New Zealand's highest civil honor. Many of her novels and short stories explore her childhood and psychiatric hospitalizations from a fictional perspective and her award winning three volume autobiographical was adapted into the film that is an angel at my table. So he had uh, this fictional parts and her award winning three volume autobiography was adapted into a film and the name of, was, name of the film was an angel at my table that was directed by Jane, Jane Campion. Jane Campion directed that film that is an angel at my table. So Janet Frame, her famous novel is Owls Do Cry. Owls Do Cry. Owls Do Cry is a modernist novel by New Zealand author Janet Frame 1957 that was published in the 1957. The book covers the story of the Wither sibling. The Wither sibling. So Owls Do Cry where in that novel we find the, the Wither sibling, the Wither siblings who lives in a seaside town in South Island, New Zealand through a period of 20 years. The book extensively covers Daphne Wither's journey including undergoing lobotomy. lobotomy. Owls Do Cry is the first novel written by Frame and its content is loosely based on Frame's life that is Janet Frame's life, particularly her experience of spending eight years in and out of mental asylums greatly influenced the content of the novel. So her experience of spending eight years in and out of the mental asyl asylums had influenced 
influenced her to write the novel Owls Do Cry. So Janet Frem is famously known for her novel that is Owls Do Cry that was published in the year 1957 and it's it, the story covers the uh, the story covers uh, the uh, the story uh, it covers the story of with her sibling with her siblings. Okay, now move to the next slide. Here uh, now the number four that is so Janet Frem is famously known for her Owls Do Cry. Okay, so we have discussed Catherine Mansfield, we have discussed Frank, uh, Frank Sargations and the novelist that is Janet Frame. Now Patricia Francis Grace, Patricia Grace is a New Zealand Maori writer. Patricia Francis Grace, Patricia Francis Grace is a New Zealand Maori writer of novels, short stories and children books. Okay, her first novel is Mutu Venu, Mutu Enu, The Moon Sleeps. Okay, her first novel is Mutu Venu, Mutu Venu, uh, what is it? Mutu when you are, the moon's slips, then potiki, kajins, baby no eyes, baby no eyes, kajins, potiki, and mutu venu, the moon slips. So, Patricia Francis Grace, another famous uh, New Zealand writer uh, who is a novelist, short stories, mm, as well as she has written children books. So, her first novel is Mutu Venua, the moon slips, and others are potiki, kajins, baby no eyes. So, those were written by Patricia Francis Grace. Francis Grace. Okay. Now move to the next. Now another. This one is famous. The famous noveler, V. T. I. Maria. V. T. I. Maria. That is, he had said that Maori culture is the Tonga. Maori culture is the Tonga. The treasure. The Tonga. The treasure. Uh, the treasure from which I source my inspiration. So V. T. I. Maria had said that Maori culture is the Tonga. The treasure vault from which I source my inspiration. It means that the VT Aimera has, 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 has been inspired, has been inspired, uh, has been inspired from that Maori culture. So his novel, famous novel that was published in the year 1987, that is The Whale Rider. The Whale Rider was written by whom? The Whale Rider was written by VT Aimera. VT Aimera was written by, uh, VT Aimera has written the novel the whale rider is best known uh, work and read widely by children and adults both in New Zealand and overseas. It was adapted into the critically acclaimed 2002 film, uh, 2002 film that is Whale Rider directed by Niki Karo. So the whale rider was written by whom? The whale. So W W starts the whale rider W. So W starts with whale. Uh, whale starts with W and the name the uh, the the name of this uh, author is VT. So W W. So this is whale rider VT Aimera. Okay, now move to uh, that was said in this novel was said in the 1980s in Wengara, a Maori community, Wengara, a Maori community on the eastern edge of New Zealand's North Island, and the novel is retelling of the myth of Fakea, uh, Faika, Paikia, Paikia. So the novel is retelling of the myth of Faikia. Kahu is the eldest great grandchild of Chiefsian Koro Afirana, and had she have been uh, and had she been a boy, she would have been the natural future leader of the tribe, but she is uh, attuned to the traditional Maori way of life and may have inherited the ability to speak. So she may have inherited the ability to speak to whales. So the whale rider was written by by by, by Viti Aimera. Okay. Now move to the next slide here. Look at his semi-autobiographical novel and see, he has also written a semi-autobiographical novel. Semi-autobiographical novel that is Nights in the Gardens of Spain. Nights in the Garden of Spain that is published in the year 1996 was about a married man was about a married man coming to terms with his homosexuality and in later works he has dealt with his historical events such as the campaign of non-violent resistance at Parikia Parika in the late 19th century. So Viti Aimekra Aimekra has written two famous novels. One is the Whale Rider, another is the Nights in the Gardens of Spain. This is autobiographical, semi autobiographical novel by Uti Aimera, that is Nights in the Gardens of Spain. Okay, now move to the next slide. Here, another famous novelist is Moyurasgi. Moyurasgi, no this, this uh, Plum is a famous novel. Plum is a famous novel. Moyurasgi, novelist, it's a trilogy. Plum is considered one of the best novels ever written in New Zealand. So, Moyurasgi is a famous novelist. Uh, Plum. So the Plum is a trilogy, is a series of three novels. One is Plum that was published in the 1978. So Plum, Make and Soul Survivor. So Plum, P-L-U-M-B, Plum, then Make. Make is a Bildungsroman novel 
and the sole survivor sole survivor survivor so so, uh, so make is a make make this a second one is a building stroman novel so plum that was published in the 1978 make published 1981 and the sole survivor published in 1983 and the second one make is a building stroman so this trilogy plum was written by the novelist the new zealand novelist called moiras gee okay now gee's grandfather look at here that is gee's grandfather so so the gee's grandfather was james chapel original grandfather so gee's grandfather was james chapel was the inspiration so who was the inspiration to write that uh, to write uh, that novel plum so it was james chapel gee's gee's grandfather moiras gee's grandfather james chapel was the inspiration for the character of george plum so george plum is a character in the novel plum so and that character was inspired hmm from her uh, from uh, from her own grandfather that is james chapel he from his uh, pra, uh, from uh, from his grandfather hmm he had wanted to write a novel about his grandfather controversial presbyterian minister james chapel for many years and the character of george plum is closely based on the character of george plum of this novel that is plum the trilogy as it's based closely based on his grandfather named james chapel so james chapel it was an inspiration hmm so the first novel is narrated by the 80 year old george plum so that it has three novel three it's a trilogy that is plum then uh, then you have make make then you have the soul survivor soul survivor okay so plum plum is about the first novel is about the 80 year 80 year old george plum not in a chronological order but by looking back through his own memories and covering the 1980s 1890s and 1940s he is a presbyterian clergyman with an unyielding and stern personality and a strong belief in his own principles who become a pacifist rationalist and he and his late wife edie had 12 children his beliefs lead to sacrifices being made both by himself and his family and and to a fractured relationship with his children with his, so this is about the first novel was about the george plum whose age is 80 years old so and the next one is about make the second novel of this of the trilogy was make is narrated by george's youngest daughter make based on his own mother is coming of age novel or a bildungs roman it is a bildungs roman novel or it is a coming of age coming coming of age novel so make and the third novel is about make son that is raymond soul soul survivor a, a, a journalist and his relationship with his cousin dougie plum a core politicians so the trilogy is largely set in henderson in west auckland where give grea so this trilogy the setting of the trilogy was henderson in west auckland henderson in west auckland jahan pe where gi grew up so this was all about the uh, the trilogy called plum trilogy written by moiras gri this is the famous novel hmm, and meg is about a big meg is a the second novel is about a, a, a building super novel coming of age story and another famous novel written by moiras gri is in mother's den in mother's in in my father's den in my father's den is a 1972 novel by a new zealand author called moiras gi and under the mountain this is a children books under the mountain under the mountain that was published in the year 1979 children's books by new zealand writer moiras gi so moiras gi has written one that is plum trilogy plum trilogy another is in my father's den in my father's in my father's den number 2 one two and number three is under the mountain so these three were important write, writings under the mountain important route writing of of moiras gi okay now move to the next novelist here is kerry and ruhi hume so she is fame the most famous the most famous new zealand writer because she was the first person to win the booker prize in 1985 1985 so because uh, because of our novel that she has written that is the bone people okay so kerry hume was a new zealand novelist poet a short story writer she also wrote under the pen name of kai kainu uh, tainu her novel is the bone people the bone people 
The famous novel The Bone People by Kerry Hume won the Booker Prize in 1985 that was published in the year 1984 and she was the first New Zealander. She was the first New Zealander to win that prestigious award and also the first writer to win the prize for her debut novel. So this was her debut novel as well. So in that debut novel, she has received the Booker Prize as well. So Kerry Hume writings explores themes of isolation, post-colonial and multicultural. So that writings her writing explores, it shows the themes of isolation, post-colonialism and multicultural identity. So, and Maori, Celtic and Norse mythology. Maori culture, Celtic culture, Norse mythology. So, these were the things that you can see, you can, you can, you can get, okay, in her novels, in the novels. So, the bone people, let's, let's uh, look about the, uh, the bone people, the bone people, the novel that was published in the year 1984, yeah. And in 1985, she got the novel, uh, she got the Booker Prize. It was said on the coast of the South Island of New Zealand. The novel focuses on three characters, all of whom are isolated. So the three characters are isolated in a different ways. A reclusive artist who is a reclusive an artist, a mute child and the child's foster father. A reclusive artist, a mute child and a child's foster father. They are the three characters. Over the course of the novel, the trio develop a tentative relationship and are driven apart by violence and they re reunite. Okay. The next slide here. Who are the three characters here? One is Kerwin Holmes. Kerwin lives in an isolated tower by the sea which is estranged from her family and community and she is part of Maori, part Pakeha and asexual. Now Simon is a mute child aged 6 or 7 and Joe is a Simon's foster father. So these three characters okay, appear in this novel that is Joe, Simon and Kerwin Holmes appear in the novel The Bone People that was written by Kerry Hume published in the year 1984 and 1985 she got the first Booker Prize for our debut novel that is The Bone People. Okay now move to the next here yeah, that is the another famous another famous novelist she is the second person to win the Booker Prize in New Zealand literature. So, she is the second person to receive the Booker Prize. So, that's why Eleanor Caton is uh, another fantastic and most famous writer, most famous novelist in the, in the in the field of New Zealand literature. So, look at now Eleanor, Eleanor Caton is a New Zealand novelist and a screenwriter. Her award winning debut novel, she has even, uh, even the in the debut novel, she has been uh, awarded with the 2016 film of the same name that is the uh, debut novel the rehearsal written as her master's thesis okay so her award-winning debut novel that is the rehearsal rehearsal written as her master's thesis and was published in 2008 and has been adapted into 2016 film of the same name so that it has a uh, it, it has a it has a film in the same name that is the rehearsal so the debut novel so Eleanor Catlin's debut novel was the rehearsal now let's look about rehearsal No, okay. Look at here. Another famous novel. Another famous novel is the Luminaries, and for this work, she has been awarded with the Booker Prize. For this Booker Prize, Booker Prize. So she was awarded with the Booker Prize for this novel. That is the Luminaries. So the Luminaries and the, the Luminaries is the famous novel written by Eleanor Catton. At the Booker Prize ceremony in Guildhall, London, just before it was announced, she had won the 2013 prize for the Luminaries. Catton's second novel. So first novel. Uh, was what, what was the first novel the in uh, the rehearsal the rehearsal was the first novel the rehearsal was the first novel and the second novel is the luminaries in 2013 so Caton's Eleanor Caton the second novel the luminaries was began at the lower you writers workshop hmm. when uh, I uh, writers workshop when she was 25 and published in 2013 Novel is set on the gold fields of New Zealand in 1866. It was shortlisted for subsequently won the 2013 Booker Prize, making Catherine at the age of 28 the youngest author ever to win. So she was the youngest author ever to win the Booker Prize, beating more established names like Jhumpa Lahedi, Com Tobin, and Catherine was previously at the age of 27 the youngest author ever to be shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Okay, so the Luminaries is the famous novel. Let's look the origin of Luminaries, how this name came. Hmm. So the Luminaries is a 2013 novel by Eleanor Catton, said in New Zealand South Island in 1866. The novel follows Walter Moody. So Walter Moody, the character appears, well, the, is Walter Moody who appears in the novel The Luminaries, 
a prospector, a prospector who travels to the west coast settlement of Hokitika, Hokitika to make his fortune on the gold fields. Instead, he stumbles into a tense meeting between 12 local men and is drawn into a complex mystery involving a series of unsolved crimes. This novel is a complex structure, has a complex, has complex structure, is based on the novel's complex structure is based on the system of Western astrology. So the structure is of Western astrology with each of the 12 local men representing one of the 12 signs of the zodiac sign. So in the zodiac signs we have 12, uh, 12 um, figure. So each of the 12 local men representing one of the 12 signs of the zodiac and with another set of characters representing planets in the solar system. So, so this is the complex structure of the uh, uh, book that has been drawn from the western astrology western astrology so how this came how this name came either 14 Ketun and her father went on a tandem trip from their home in Christchurch so they went to Christchurch over the Arthur's Pass to the west coast and this inspired her interest in the 1960s west coast gold rush and she started thinking about the story so she, uh, she spent time in Hokitika while writing the book many years later. Okay. And she was also inspired by her love of adventure, mysteries of children and young adults. And after writing her first novel that was a rehearsal, which had no specific setting, wanted to write a book that was firmly located in time and space. So she wanted to write a book that was firmly located in time and space. Who? It each it is none other than Eleanor Catherine, the second New Zealand writer to win the Booker Prize hmm, in 2013 hmm, for her novel that is the Luminaries. So the Luminaries make use of numerous real life settings. In 1866, Hokitika, including the West Coast Times office, Revel and Warp Streets and the former courthouse on the Swell, Swell Street. After its publications, the town offered Luminaries walking tours and Hokitika Museum published a book of historical photos captioned with passages from her novel. Reading and when he was reading and researching the book, to, uh, reading and researching the book took two years. Catton said of her process that I started reading and beginning with gold rush history, gold rush history, which led me to the nature of the wealth and which led me to the confident streaks and scams which led me to fortune, to, to fortune telling, which led me to the stars. So he was talking about the astrology. She also read as much 19th century fiction and time fiction as she could. Now towards the end of her research, so when she read The Castle of Crossed Destinies by Italo Calvino, The Castle of Crossed Destinies by Italo Calvino and found the book structural patterning so, and made it difficult to read patterning, uh, found the book structural Patterning made it difficult to read and she decided she wanted to write a book that was structurally ornate and actively plotted at the same time. So she wanted to write a book uh, that is structurally ornate and actively plotted at the same time. So these were eight writers that I have discussed important writers and their works in the next video. I will discuss important poets, children writers and the playwrights in the next video. So thank you for watching. South Tutorial, keep subscribing South Tutorial and stay tuned with, with me because videos are coming soon and 